Okay, Suzanne, mm. what the hell is going on? What the hell is going on? How am I supposed to know? <laughs> um, it's a really difficult time, isn't it? I think after the vote to leave, we were all so excited and we very naively expected that the government would enact what we decided as they said they would. And here we are now at this very sorry pass where even the most ardent Brexiteers now feel that they have to cave in and vote for this appalling international treaty that's going to basically keep us in the European Union in all but name, um, pay out billions to this thing that we want to leave, and yet we're not going to have any say in it whatsoever. Mm -hmm. It's really, really come to a very sorry pass. I can understand yeah. why, why, why are they're they doing, doing this. Yeah. I can understand why they're doing it. They really do feel that, particularly with the vote the other day to take no deal off the table, mm -hmm. that uh, there will be no Brexit. Yeah. But this is the last chance that we've got to get but it But surely if there's no Brexit, it would be such an obvious thwarting of democracy that something would happen. It would be so obvious that ordinary people would come to the, to, to the rescue. Come to their senses. <laughs> yeah, come, well, come to the rescue. Some of us came to our senses a long time ago. But yeah, I think, um, you know, I think for the, for, to basically have no Brexit now, um, Article 50 would have to be revoked. Mm -hmm. um, we wouldn't be leaving, the, the, the basically Article 50 process would be ignored on the 29th of March and of course the European Union would need to have a part to I mean, Philip Hammond well. has already said that we're not leaving on the yeah. 29th of March, so... Well, Philip Hammond has been one of, you know, I've, I've seen a lot of stuff about Brexit traitors on social media yeah. these last few days and I think that's been very much angled to the wrong people, people mm -hmm. who have, after yeah. a lot of consideration, changed their mind. But uh, Philip Hammond, is he in that list? No. <laughs> True? No. <laughs> No, but it's, it's, it's a really difficult situation because if you, if you look at why, the reasons why they're voting for the withdrawal agreement, they feel that ultimately there'll be no electoral repercussions. What do you mm. think about that? I think there's a real gaping hole in British politics, isn't there, for mm. a pro-Brexit party, a sensible pro-Brexit <laughs> okay. party. Because it's looking now, isn't it, that the only way we're actually going to change anything is by getting a majority of members in Parliament yeah. who are for Brexit. So you want people to be voting for the most Brexity candidate Absolutely. possible in the next the generation. Most Brexity candidate yeah. possible. And even if that means yeah. that it's still headed by Theresa May, it's still a Conservative Party member that you should vote for? You know, if the Theresa May is still Prime Minister come the next general election then what the hell has happened in our country? How many times has she promised to stand down just before the next surviving. general election? She just keeps on <laughs> going. No wonder they call her the Maybot. Um, yeah, it's really, that woman, oh my God, I was just so shocked by her. Yeah. I used to really have a lot of time for Theresa May. I yeah. used to really like her, actually. She used to be a councillor in oh, the London really? Borough of Merton, like I was a few years ago. So I, I felt there was almost a kind of unspoken connection as well. But no, she has just gone completely off the wall. You know, every single one of those red lines she put down in her Lancaster completely house speech, crossed. completely crossed yeah. out. She has badly let us down, badly so, let us down for not giving a positive vision of Brexit. Which no, could have got, and which again, everybody could have got behind. But that's the thing, it's, it's, it's that positivity that I think, you know, I know that Leavers of Britain is constantly mm. pushing the positive angle, we're pushing the positive angle. Mm. What can we do as people who are members of Leavers of Britain, or even just in general, people who support Brexit, what can we do to get the message out there that we're still right behind Brexit? Well, I think there's lots of things we can do, aren't there? I mean, it's, it, it sounds boring, but I keep saying it, write your MP. Yeah. Because ultimately, it's right now the fate of the country yeah. is in MPs' hands. So write your MP. If they're anti-Brexit, tell them to respect democracy. If they're pro-Brexit, write to them and encourage I guess them and support pushing, them. Putting on the pressure. Um, and then let's see where we are in, 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 by, by March the 29th. Oh, come on the March on the 29th. That's oh, yeah. a big one. On you must come to London Absolutely. on the 29th. Move hell or high water to get to London. You know, beg, borrow, steal, and lift, whatever you have to do. Um, <laughs> Don't steal. <laughs> <She's mad. laughs> well, maybe, you know. Oh. I think there comes a point, doesn't there? I think the other thing is we have to start thinking seriously about is whether we have to engage in civil yeah. disobedience. Because mm. with the best will in the world, I don't want to break the law, you don't want to break the law, nobody wants to break the law. Mm -hmm. But if our lawmakers will not respect the law, then what choice do we have? So for me, I think the one thing that I am thinking I might have to do post 29th of March is stop paying my TV licence. Yeah. Well, I guess um, it kind of begs the question, as a like, start. you know, why should we hold those in authority who, who won't listen to us? Mm. Why, why should we hold them with such respect as we do if they don't hold us with the same respect? 
So yeah, I mean, I guess, I mean, what would people be willing to do? I guess that's the next question. I think that's the question that we need to start yeah. thinking about. As I say, I think um, the way in which the media has acted since the referendum result came through has been to thwart it. Yeah. Some coverage I've seen has been absolutely atrocious. The language that is used, not just about Brexit itself, but about ordinary people yeah. like. Oh, yeah, like I mean, it's it's utterly I mean, disgraceful. It's disgusting. That's precisely why Leave Us Britain exists because it's mm. ordinary people who are getting um, sort of blacklisted yeah. by society because they voted for something that is a legitimate political concern. Absolutely. And the concern of the majority of people in the absolutely. country. Yeah. Which you, we just have to keep bashing that home, I think. But no, it's absolutely awful. So I, I think, you know, we won the battle yeah. on referendum day in 2016, but we sadly have not won the war and we're just gonna have to keep fighting. Yeah. What would you be prepared to do? What would I be prepared to do? Well, I already don't pay my TV licence because I don't watch the BBC, despite being sometimes on the show. Despite <laughs> saying a level headed. Yeah. Um, but um, what would I be prepared to do? Well, I'd be prepared to boycott products, I'd be prepared to go on protests, I'd be prepared. What else is there to do? I mean, like, what we need like loads of ideas. In fact, we if you've do. got any That's ideas, idea. yes, send us your ideas. Send us your ideas, mm -hmm. and we'll definitely uh, put it up and we'll be encouraging people to do them. Depending on what they are, actually. Yeah. So, um, we don't want anything like. You know, we all have to do what we feel comfortable yeah, with. But I'm exactly. sure, en masse, there is a lot we can do that we do all feel comfortable with that will have a massive impact. I mean, just mm. imagine if, if, you know, only one in ten leavers stop paying their TV license. It's a hell of a lot of money that BBC yes, and yeah. Channel 4 are going to have to do with that and serve them right. Yep, absolutely. Okay, well, Suzanne. Um, Let's look forward to what happens tomorrow. See what happens tomorrow. And uh, which is a big vote. The, is it a meaningful vote again? I've lost out, I've lost count how many I think, meaningful votes I think, I think the term <laughs> meaningful needs to be redefined in yes, the dictionary after this fiasco. Absolutely. It's not meaningful at all, is it? No, it is the same. Okay. All right, so we'll catch you guys later. Get things marked. Yes. We'll get there. Just so. might take longer than planned. Mm -hmm. Okay. Catch you later. <laughs> <laughs> Great.